So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight on this Varoma cooking class where we're, we hope to inspire you all to use your Varoma. Um, and, um, you know, as we cook something sweet and, um, you know, make a few dishes, we've got Nicole starting off first for tonight, the steamed pistachio cheesecakes in mango. Actually, before I do continue, I know we did say it before, but please um, stay on mute. And of course, you can um, pop any questions or, um, you know, anything in the chat um, and we can, yeah, answer them. So um, thank you to our um, chat person, our moderator tonight, Anne-Marie, and we will, I'll introduce everyone as we cross over to them. So how are you going, Nicole? Ready to start us off tonight with the steamed pistachio cheesecakes? Nice out. Hello, 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 everybody. Uh, can you hear me? Wave, Henry, if you can hear me. I can see your face. Perfect. Hi, everybody. I'm Nicole. Um, I'm so excited tonight to be doing a Varoma cooking class with you all um, and all of the people that we've got here. It's quite overwhelming. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you all for being here. Tonight I'm making um, the steamed pistachio puddings and the recipe calls for mango. Because mangoes are out of season, I wanted to use strawberries today. Um, strawberries go great with pistachio and mint as well. So this is really about um, being able to use whatever's in season for you. So I'm using pistach um, pistachios with the strawberries and I'm gonna put some blueberries in there too. Strawberries at the moment are like $1.50 from Woolworths for a punnet. So this is perfect to use them up. And this recipe also calls for ricotta and cream cheese in there too. You can always go dairy-free if you want and get the dairy-free options for it as well. But we're using that. It's got a little bit of sugar, a little bit of corn flour. So it's pretty good, actually. Um, I have to say that my, my daughter's really excited that I'm making this tonight. So we're going to get started. Um, and I had the recipe up, but we'll just get in there. <laughs> it was all there and then ready to go. There we go. Okay, perfect. So, how about that local sporting team? <laughs> how about I talk you through the recipe? I mean, you are I, a chef. I was ready. I was ready and cued. And then the thermomix, of course, because I um, shut down, it, it took its time. So that's perfect. Yeah. I, oh, gosh. Nicole's amazing. I actually <laughs> said to her, <laughs> so <amazing. laughs> you are, I said to her, let's cook this at our next, you know, um, cooking class. And she's like, oh, I don't need cookie dough. I can just, you know. So she's my freehand girl. She just, you know, cooks on the, as she goes. Would you like right. me? This is, this is out of my comfort zone now. <laughs> she doesn't normally use cookie dough. Very much. <laughs> I'm the opposite. I'm quite the opposite. I love using cookie dough. I find it really inspiring. And even though I consider myself a good cook, I do, I love, like I said, the inspiration, not only that, but just, I do like that I'm guided to do what, you know, told to do what's next. And because I am also one of those cooks that, um, I organize sort of as I'm going I don't I'm not pre-prepped all the time like I know what I've got and it's there and as it's cooking or preparing one thing I'm sort of doing the next so yeah would you like me to talk you through it Nicole I'm more than happy to I love this recipe I've made it a few times in all right I've got the recipe here on my phone anyway let's you know what? I'm supposed to do it manual because that's how I cook. I've got the rest of the So you're going to pop into the Thermomix bowl. Yes. So what we've got here are pistachios in their shell. And it's 80 grams of pistachio. So I'm just putting half in. Why am I using cookie dough? <laughs> All right. And we're going up to speed seven for four seconds. <laughs> that's outside of my comfort zone. So with half of the pistachios, what I've got are ramekins here that we've buttered. So I've just put a bit of butter, but these are just my coffee cups. So you can use whatever you've got and these are gonna steam in the Varoma. So with that with that um, pistachio there, I'm gonna put them aside and coat 
and cope the um, cope the uh, cups with that. But I'll do that while you guys are busy doing other things so we can get this ball rolling. And then what we're going to do is throw in the rest of the pistachio. So the other 40 grams, we're going to throw in then also to the, we're going to do that again for speed seven. And then we're going to throw in the mint and the lime zest and all of the other yumminess too. So we go up again. All right. So when is that fine crown? Like, oh, it's probably a little bit dark, but it's like a fine bread crumb. Little bits of chunky, chunky through it too. Then in there, we're also going to add in the zest, the corn flour. So that's just a tablespoon of corn flour that's going in, 30 grams of sugar, and then the lime zest. So I've just got a whole lime, and you can use like a microplane or a peeler even if you don't have one of these or um, even the little zesters that you can get. And that all just goes straight in. This smells so good already. And then we're gonna scrape down the sides. And that's it. And that goes on 15 seconds on speed nine. So freestyle. Freestyle works. Mm -hmm. And then what have you got to do next? Add in all the yummy ingredients. That's it. That's it. So there's actually a step where you cook. So you put in the cream cheese and ricotta and eggs and blend. So we've got the ricotta here. It's not the whole tub, it's just a few spoons. Yeah. This, so. <laughs> this is how I cook. <laughs> so just know you can use the Thermomix however it is that you normally cook as well. You know, don't be afraid to just play around with it as well. The Thermomix is extremely forgiving, extremely forgiving. You can't make a mistake. Right, and then we've got the eggs. So I always crack my eggs into a little bowl or cup um, just in case there's any shell and you can check to make sure that it's all out. That's just, that's me. <laughs> all right. That's it. So cream cheese, ricotta and eggs go in and then we go for it again, just on speed four this time. So just mixing it. And then we put them on to cook. What else do you make in your Varoma? What other sweet treats do you make? Me? Sticky date pudding. Yeah, me too. Whole cakes. Whole cakes, yeah. yeah, yes, so much so. Delicious, yeah. and bagels. If you haven't tried bagels in the Thermomix, oh my goodness. You steam them in the Varoma and then bake them in the oven. I make them every Christmas day. That's like, uh, and that's the, the consistency of the um, mix there. So it's quite thick. Um, but yeah, bagels are a Christmas treat with the um, tequila salmon from the Festive Flavor Cookbook. My gosh. I'm a winner at Christmas. I'm a winner. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so oh, Nicole, we've got a bit of conflict happening in the chat. <laughs> Some people. I'm discombobulating brains tonight, I bet. <laughs> you really are. You've got to settle this one for us now. Some people think that you've said that you left the shells on the pistachios and <laughs> others think that you left the shells up. Well, there we go. Take it from Nicole. You tell them, lady. I to... It was a, pack, a packet of unshelled pistachios, unshelled, no shells, no shells, <laughs> unless you love your dentist. <laughs> unshelled, I promise. The, the, the shell ones are over there, they were unshelled. No, just the, just the middle part. Anything else? <laughs> no, that's it, good, okay. So then we've got cream cheese, ricotta and eggs in there, and then we cook it for seven, on 70 degrees, so just a warming temperature. So you see that I've been just using my spatula instead of my MC. Um, the MC I use 100% while I'm cooking, but because I've been mixing stuff around, I've just been using that in there in replacement. But just make sure that you always use your MC when you're cooking. All right. So. Definitely. <laughs> 
So 70, 70 degrees, three minutes, speed three. Three, 73. That's how my mum brain remembers. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So while that's looking, are we throwing to someone else and then I'm waiting up or am I still talking? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We are. We're moving over to Sarah. Oh, yeah. Sarah four. Ask away, all right? And stuff and been with Calamix for years and years and years. If you have kind of questions, I am the girl for you. Ask away, ask away. <laughs> Throw them. The curlier, the better. <laughs> so, Nick, just tell us after that, you are just popping it on to cook for 20 minutes, right? Yeah. So, I've got them on the tray here, but I'm actually going to put them into the Thermomix dish. I'm uh, sorry, into the Varema dish there. So, they're nice and deep, and they're going to get all that heat around. Cool. We'll yeah. cross over to Sarah, and then we'll come back to you. Hey, Sarah. Well, hello, hello. How okay. are you? Yes, good, good, good. You can introduce your dish tonight. So I'm actually making the wonton soup, and this recipe I'm a little bit unlike Nicole I love cookie dough just because my brain can't think after work um so I like that it has everything laid out but I actually years ago this was a recipe that I made on my first cooking experience before I bought one so I really like this recipe because I would have never ever ever made one ton before having a thermomix so um what I have done beforehand to prep just to help with time is um, I've sauteed the mushrooms and the wombok cabbage. Um, and now I'm just adding the rest of the filling for the wontons in there. Um, so I'm just gonna chuck some ginger in. Um, it likes 10 grams. I like things a little bit more with stronger flavor. So I put a little bit extra ginger in there. Um, this recipe actually wants ask for pork but I don't eat pork so what I've actually done is I've minced up some chicken um, and I'm going to put chicken in there instead um, so I'm going to add in some spring onions and yeah so this recipe is the um, pork wonton recipe is from the Matt Sinclair collection on cookie do but um, like me Sarah doesn't eat pork and she's making with chicken. But you can always substitute that 300 grams um, with vegetables, of course. But there is also on Cookie Do in that collection um, a vegetarian one as well. Yeah, so there is a vegetarian one. I actually do substitute it out a lot. I've done it with um, white fish and prawn before um, and with chicken mince as well. So I guess it is kind of really important not to necessarily stick to the recipe. Like you can always substitute things out, um, which is definitely something that I do quite regularly. Um, so I've just added in my chicken mince. I'm going to put in some white pepper. Since having a thermomix, I have fallen in love with white pepper. I don't know what I was living under before having a thermomix, but I didn't even know it was a thing. And now it's probably one of my favorite things in the world to add in. I'm going to put in some light soy sauce. We're going to actually use this again later for the broth. Um, and the thing that I love about this recipe is that the actual broth is what steams the wontons. So you get all of that nice flavour that smells the whole kitchen all through the wontons. Um, and since having my thermomix and using the Varoma, the thing that I love is actually the layered cooking where you have something going down the bottom, steaming up in the Varoma and you've got three things on the go at once, which is amazing and also doesn't take up that much space on the bench. And did you mince your own chicken tonight? Yes, I did. That is also something that I would have never done 
beforehand. <laughs> I remember growing up, mum used to love mincing her own meat, especially lamb meat, um, that I have never made meat except for the mix, which is super easy. And I love it because my partner and I tend to buy bulk um, amounts of meat. And then, you know, we might not necessarily want to have chicken breast, um, two kilos of chicken breast for a, um, a week. So what we'll actually do is we'll use the mincer we'll, so that it, we can kind of be creative with what we're making. Mm-hmm. And you just use it on turbo for, you know, two seconds? Two seconds. I put it on about three times um, and then I just check the consistency. But, yeah, it's definitely something that's really cool to do. Okay, so I'm just going to put the filling. So I don't know if you can see the filling here, but it's got lots of um, mushroom, cabbage, it smells like for the filling, it smells so fresh. Um, I love having lots of garlic and ginger in everything. Um, so it always helps with making it more smell more fragrant. Um, and yeah, I definitely know that pre-thermo mix, I loved a frozen dumpling. Um, and even with that, if I'm still being a little bit naughty and cheating and not making them from scratch, I will actually use the Thermomix to steam my frozen dumplings as well. Um, so yeah, very cool that we can do this. Um, as well, I'm just going to clean my Thermomix. So there is actually the pre-clean function on the thermomix, which is also life-changing because it helps you not need to clean. Hey, Sarah, should we let you get your thermomix cleaned up? Are you going to go on and do something else now or should we go over to Evie? Leah, it's up to you. I'm, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Oh, okay. There you is keep going. going. <laughs> yep, sorry. Sorry, I am not fancy enough and have um, two bowls. It is my goal to eventually get another bowl, but I don't necessarily have enough room in my house at the moment. <laughs> um, so we just make do with one, which is also is fine. So I'm just gonna add some sugar in here because we're up to making the broth. Um, and this broth is probably one of my favorites of all time. So but I'm gonna put some more of the shakuing wine in there, 20 grams. And our veggie stock paste. So I love making veggie stock paste. Um, it's actually my favorite thing. I have not bought stock paste in forever. Um, and as you can see from my container, it's time for me to make some more. Um, but I kind of just normally go through my fridge, my crisper and see what's looking a little bit sad and throw it in the veggie stock paste rather than necessarily um, following this will do recipe for that. Um, and then we're going to add our water. So if someone was asking about a second bowl or a spare bowl, you can now get them on the mix shop they have become um, available unless any of the other consultants or team leaders can correct me but the last time I looked um, they were available. Yes I did see them there the other day and it was testing me to go and buy a new one but oh, buy another one but I'm not quite there yet because I have no room in my kitchen. Um, which thankfully I have a thermo mix or otherwise I would have be absolutely screwed. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do, the broth's on now and I'm actually going to wrap the wonton. So just want to check, you might be able to. Now I will be cautious and warn everyone that um, the screen is now officially on a wine bottle. Um, so if it randomly goes black, it's because the wine bottle has moved. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you a couple of ways how to wrap wontons. 
Um, I'm sure there are a million other ways other than this, but um, I'm going to use the ways that I like doing it most. Now, sometimes I will use an actual egg wash to help steal it, but today I'm just using water. Um, so I'm just going to put a spoonful in the fill in the center here. I'm going to start with the easy one. So I'm going to fold it like a triangle, push down the edges and wrap the two corners into the middle so that it looks like a little envelope. Um, for anyone that really liked origami, I used to do heaps of origami when I was at school, so I find this whole process very therapeutic. Um, so for the next one, again, we're going to fold it into a triangle. I'm actually going to pull the two corners together so that it looks essentially like a little, little boat. Very cute. Yeah. And you're going to show us another different one? One more. The, the cheat one, I call it, <laughs> um, where you put it in the middle, wrap it around, and make it look like a little money bag. That's an easy one. That's an easy one. Yeah. If you are, um, well, you can also always just fold them into triangles or rectangles if you don't have time as well. So. There are lots of ways you can quickly put your wontons together. You can actually make the wrappers, but I didn't actually have time to make them from scratch, so I did just buy them from the Asian market. <laughs> All good. Thank you so much, Sarah. No and then, worries. So you're going to finish that off then and mm -hmm. pop it. Um, pop, pop the room, pop them all in the aroma and put them onto steam while the broth is going as well. And we'll come back to you yeah, later on and we'll have a look. So we're crossing over to Evie now. Hello, Evie. Hi, everybody. How is everyone tonight? And you can introduce your dish for us as well too, please. Okay, fantastic. Um, I am making the paprika chicken with creamy paprika sauce. Um, so you can see my screen up there, which is great. So I'm going to press start cooking. Um, I have already weighed my rice and I have already washed my rice. So I am going to insert it into the bowl. Uh, now, I love this nifty trick of using this spatula to actually put the rice in there and also remove it um, with, without burning your hands, which is great. Um, I've already added the water and I am going, I've already inserted the simmering basket. Fantastic. Uh, done this. Okay. Now I've just for reference, I've already pre-weighed and cut everything just to make it a little bit uh, quicker. So all of my veggies are cut. Everything's been weighed. Uh, so we're going to skip a few steps uh, now. We'll skip that one. Okay, so we're going to done that. Okay, place the aroma. Okay, great. So we've already also cut the breast fillets and they're all ready to go. So I'm going to season my chicken breast fillets. I've got all of my ingredients ready in here. These are from the mix shop. I don't know if anyone's seen them or have them, but I'm just going to quickly season. Now I've got some herb salt. I actually didn't have herb salt, so I just used um, regular uh, sea salt. And actually, I'm going to use a spoon for that one. And I mix it with some herbs. Now, that's terrible seasoning, Evie. Anywho. Okay, uh, and I'm going to add some virgin olive oil. Now, the recipe asks for ghee. I don't have ghee, but you can substitute with olive oil or butter. And it tells you to dot it, but I go nuts with olive oil, as well as most people know I am famous for adding garlic to everything and never following the garlic instructions. Uh, so I'm going to add that up there. So what's going to happen now is my rice is actually going to... What am I doing? Good. Uh, my rice is going to cook 
while my chicken is steaming. Okay. Now I've got to remember to put the lid on there, otherwise this will not secure. We've got to put our lid on top. Okay, and then we are going to turn the speed selector to six. Alrighty. All right. Now we are going to start steaming. So, um, uh, after that finishes steaming, I'm going to be adding the vegetables to the Roma bowl. And while the chicken is doing its second lot of steaming, it's also going to cook and steam all the vegetables, which is awesome. So we've got the rice down the bottom, we've got the vegetables in the bowl, and we've got the chicken cooking in the tray. So it's really time saving and I love it. And I think it's fantastic. Um, and then later on, we're going to make a sauce as well to go with the whole thing, which is awesome. So it's an all in one dish, love it. Don't have to worry about cleaning pots and pans, which is why I bought this because I was sick and tired of cleaning pots and pans all the time. <laughs> Absolutely, it's partly why I, you know, bought it as well, so I don't have to use my stove. And it cooks at a lower temperature, which is so good. So moving on to me now, we'll cross back to Evie later. Thank you, Evie. I am making the pasta. So the tomato pasta with vegetables and feta. So here we go. We are chopping up the veggies. So of course, I have everything ready. It's asking for one carrot, um, an onion and garlic as well. So there it is, and then it goes into the bowl. And we're going to chop that up now. Three seconds on speed seven. And now we're going to saute. So this is a really, I mean, you could do this any time if you're making a bolognese or um, you know, anything where you're sauteing some onion and you want to sneak in some veggies, um, you know, even if you're doing something like meatballs, you can always pop a little bit of veg in there as well while you're sauteing your onion. So we're just weighing in um, 20 grams of olive oil, which is about a tablespoon. And next, we put that on now to... Saute. And while that's sorting, because I'm just looking at the time, are we going to cross over to Sarah? Did you want to start your dish actually, Sarah? Sure. All right. So um to me can you in hear me? about three minutes. Yes. Oh, can we hear you? Yes. And we'll come back to me in three minutes if you want to remind me, Anne Marie, please. Thank All right. You. Well, hi everybody. My name's Sarah, and um, I am doing a um, carrot, uh, mint, and feta salad. And I've not done it before, um, so I am doing this for the first time tonight. And I've prepped some of my ingredients, um, and I am pretty much ready to go. Except my machine just turned off while I was waiting. <laughs> So um, I use cookie dough all the time, um, religiously, and I had pre-saved it into my machine, um, which is nice and easy for me to jump straight onto the recipe. Um, as you see here, I've got my Varoma, which is sitting up here. So for those that haven't sort of seen it in action too much, that's what it will look like. I'm just gonna go to my week and it's just connecting online again. So I may have an issue like Nicole. <laughs> so um, bear with That's me. It's just, should it's we just jump? Okay. Oh. I'm all good. All good? All right. It's okay. coming. So today I've already cooked three dishes, a yogurt cake and some mashed potato. So today I'm doing the carrot, feta and mint salad. Um, and I'm just going to start my cooking and follow the instructions because, like I said, I've not actually done this recipe before. So it's telling me to add two garlic cloves. So I've um, 
just peeled them, got them ready to go, <coughs> chuck them in, hit next. Um, and it's telling me to get some mint. So I have already got some organized, um, pop some mint straight in. It's about three and a half sprigs of fresh, beautiful mint. Next. I'm just gonna put my lid on with the measuring cup. Next, turn to seven. All right, so it gives me instructions all the way and it's telling me to scrape down the sides. So if you can see, that is now blitzed it beautifully. It smells amazing. Fresh garlic, fresh mint, scrape down the sides. I'm just gonna keep following these instructions because I've never done this recipe before. Okay, 40 grams of lemon juice. I've squeezed some of it earlier. So I just pour it in and wait till it says that it's at 40. Keep going, keep going. Yep, perfect. Next. 50 grams of extra virgin olive oil. And I just literally pour it in. I don't need to measure, weigh anything. It does it all for me. I just keep pouring until it says stop. And 50 grams is done. Next, two teaspoons of ground cumin. Just pop that straight in. One. Two. Next, two teaspoons of some paprika. One, two. Next, teaspoon of salt. So I haven't really had to think of anything just yet except follow the instructions. Next, some ground pepper. Next, I put my lid back on. Mixing. Okay, so. Wow, I'll show you what this looks like. It's, you can see it's kind of all saucy, yeah? So it's telling me now to put it in another bowl, which I, ooh, have right here. So it's telling me to pour it into another bowl. Wow, that smells and looks amazing. Scrape, scrape, scrape. And I've had my Thermomix now for about a year and a half and I use it, I reckon, three times a day. I make sourdough every day. Last night I made some yogurt. Today I made a yogurt cake. Okay, so it's telling me that I don't have to clean it. So, without cleaning, hit next. It's telling me to add some water. So I'm getting ready for my Varoma steaming cooking. And I just literally pour it on in until it tells me to stop, which it will soon. About 500. Next. All right. So this is the Varoma part. So oh, it's telling me to place my Varoma on top. So it's giving me instructions to put it on top of the lid. So here is the Varoma. Okay, this is what we're using. And it's telling me to weigh in 700 Dutch carrots because it's a carrot salad. Now, I've already done that. So you can see here the beautiful carrots. I saved us some time and I've peeled them and trimmed them. And it will, you pop them in there and it weighs it. Hit next. And all I do now is put the lid on. Next. And I'm going to turn it and it's going to steam for 13 minutes. So I think that's over to the next person.
back to me and I'm going to continue because I sauteed that and now I have already just added in 400 grams of water so now we're actually going to make um, the sauce um, and I added two tins of tomatoes 30 grams of tomato paste I'm putting in two tablespoons of vegetable stock paste so whoopsie and I actually don't really add salt to my food so and I love the flavor of the vegetable stock paste um, so I just add three instead of two because I love it so much now I'm going to put my Varoma dish on top so this is actually my tomato sauce cooking here and then I'm going to pop my Varoma dish on top and it's asking me to weigh in um, and slice up a capsicum a red capsicum a um, some mushrooms I've already got it here so I'll just show you um, zucchini um, green beans so it's all there and um, popping that on top of my thermomix bowl lid and I'm going to, oh, as well as the feta cheese so the feta cheese goes on top and I've just diced that into two centimeter pieces so on that goes as well Use my spatula and get all that goodness off and spread the cheese. And it just melts really nicely over those veggies as well. And now I do have to season it. So I will season it with some salt and pepper, as well as some oregano and thyme. So I've got some dry thyme and dried oregano. So on that goes. And next. We're going to secure the lid and that is going, whoopsie, that is going to steam now for nine minutes. Whoopsie. There we go. That's going to steam now for nine minutes. And we're going to cross over to who's up next. Oh, Nicole, how are your, let's come back to you and see how you're going with your, you've still got time to cook, yeah? All right. And who else was there? Sarah, tell us where you're at with your cooking, with your wontons. They're still cooking away? Yes, I've just put them on. Um, so they are going to steam through here any second. Excellent. And how's Evie's dish coming along? Yay, still cooking. <laughs> So we're all just waiting for a little bit of some cooking. So Nicole, tell me, do you want to talk to us? No, she doesn't want to talk to us. <laughs> well, I'm going to talk then because we still have to wait. What was it, five minutes or four minutes? Yes, I've still got, I've got four and a half minutes left. So I just wanted to say that once you've oh, finished cooking the um, puddings, or the cakes, they will actually generally get chilled. So then, then you can remove them easily um, as cakes from the ramekins or whatever you use to cook them in. Um, we're gonna eat them hot. So because it's winter time and we can. So I've got the berries, I've got blueberries and strawberries here that we're gonna put on top. We've garnished with some mint leaves as well. And these are absolutely delicious. I can't wait. It's such a beautiful combination with the lime and the pistachios and then the fruits. So just know that you can use whatever is in season. Um, you don't, uh, like if it's something that you want to cook um, and the fruit or vegetable isn't in season, you can swap it out. You know, the Thermomix will take a change. <laughs> and even with technical difficulties, it doesn't matter because the Thermomix will still keep going and going and going. So um, I wanted to throw it back to the people that are in the audience and just see if they've got questions or comments or have they picked up what's been their favorite tip or trick tonight that they've seen um, so that we can keep the conversation going as well. Or oh. ginger steamed puddings. Yes, I'm going to try those. <laughs> Definitely, I'm seeing them. Can I just interrupt for a minute because we did have um, a question here, someone saying that um, about the vegetables cook, not cooking through. So what you can do with this dish as well, um, when you're popping in your bed, I actually do, I'm not sure if you noticed, but I cut mine quite finely. Um, I do, I don't mind them a little bit crunchy, but remember that once you turn out your vegetables, stir it through the sauce with the pasta as well, it does kind of 
you know, and especially if you have a, a thermo server or you just pop it in a bowl and you just stir that through, they actually do soften a little bit more. But I do know what you mean. I, ha I do make this dish. Um, so yeah, that's what I've done. The other option is, of course, you could cook it a little bit longer if you didn't want to cut your veggies smaller. And um, sorry, did, was there any more questions? So shall we go back to you, Nick? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, I'm just, I was just looking, I'm reading all the comments. These are amazing. I'm <laughs> just catching up with all the comments. But yeah, just know that when you're using the steamer, I think someone's asked what's the maximum amount of rice that you can use uncooked. I reckon it's probably the maximum of about 500 grams um, in, in the actual basket. That's probably the most, 400. There we go, Leah's correcting me. Yeah, usually um, I, I believe that, um, so with um, the manual, it does say uh, 350, but we let us, after this, we will, um, I'll give you the exact, on the registration, those of you that are registered, of course, all of you that are on, um, we send you an email afterwards, so I'll pop that in there. We'll make sure that we put the correct quantity, but yeah. I'm looking at these questions coming through. So would using boiling water for steaming help? Yes, absolutely. All of the timing is done on cold water start. Okay, so if you want to cut down your cooking time, yes, put hot water in there from the kettle. Things like cauliflower acid, right? Yeah, absolutely. So if you are needing to stir things during the aroma while cooking, look, most things, if there is gaps between the food, it will cook evenly. But if it's something like cauliflower rice that can like stick together, then yeah, give it a little stir through every now and again, or put like, I put like rivers through it, if that makes sense. Like I put little steam rivers through the cauliflower rice to kind of create um, pockets where the steam can come through. Yes, so instead of cold tap water, yes, use the hot boiling water. Um, other things when cooking rice as well, like if you rinse your rice really, really well, that water stays on the rice and that helps the steaming process. Or if you wanted to soak your ground rice beforehand, that cuts down the cooking time too. So you can soak it for an hour or even you know for a few hours if you want to. All right, for yogurt, make sure you do a vinegar yes, a vinegar wash first, yes. So um, these are all great, great questions. I love, like, I, honestly, one of my favorite things still to make is the chicken or the salmon velouté, which was one of our old, um, yeah, demo dishes. How good is it? It was like two meals in one, so fancy. The um, potato and leek soup, and then on top, you're steaming chicken or salmon. So um, the beauty of that is that it's like the two meals are entree and a main in one, or tonight and tomorrow night's dinner. Um, and the other big advantage of that is that the chicken or the salmon was just cooked so perfectly, so deliciously. Um, with the salmon or if you're cooking any kind of fish, I always recommend to um, put a piece of paper towel, I'm um, sorry, baking paper underneath. And you can wet that baking paper and scrunch it up and it becomes quite pliable and lay that in the tray. And what the, the water in the baking paper does as well is it makes the heat transfer so much easier as well. So that's a little tip or trick. Now let me just get my napkins. Okay, so these look ridiculous. They're all fluffed up. They're all fluffed up. They're perfectly cooked, little puddings. And then just to garnish, I normally would just put a couple of mint leaves like so and some strawberries and a couple of blueberries. So if you want, we can come back to you later. And I know that you can eat it like that, but I do like when you, you actually it turn it out. But it, it's, gotta, yeah, it's gotta be cooled down a little bit. But another tip for that, if you did want to turn it out earlier and you were making these cakes, you could actually put a little bit of glad wrap in there as well, like in the bottom. And yeah. so that, you know, if you did want to eat them warm straight away, you could just tip them out yeah. and do that as well. I'm going to put these in the fridge to cool down. Yep, sounds good. And Evie, how many minutes have you got on your dish or do you want to tell us where you're at? Um, so I am currently cooking the vegetables um, and the chicken um, and I've still got a bit of time left so you might want to come back to me. <laughs> Absolutely well mine is actually just going to well, almost finish I've got another minute on my vegetables I just noticed that. 
I got some tomato on my Thermomix. So I'm actually going to stop it. It's one minute earlier. Like I was saying, I don't mind a bit of crunch in my veg anyway. So um, I'm going to put on the pasta to cook in the sauce. So um, let me just, okay. So basically when you stop your Thermomix or when it finishes and it's been heating um, at that, you know, high heat, so we've got it on Verona, it does do a countdown. Um, and the reason, so it doesn't, the arms don't release straight away because it is hot. So the food just gives it a chance for the food to settle and, you know, and then, then, it will release, as you can see. Um, so let me press next. So now we remove the Varoma because the idea is that we're going to put the pasta in. So you know that the lid of your Varoma actually acts as a trivet. So I'm actually using my old Varoma lid. We actually um, do have black ones now. If you purchased a, um, a Thermomix recently and you're wondering why my one's clear, um, I do have two Thermomixes and I do some, have, have some of the new ones. So yeah, it acts as a trivet and you can just put it down like that. Now we're adding in our pasta into the sauce. So in goes my pasta. Now I am using gluten-free pasta. Um, just a note with pasta as well, um, especially the gluten-free ones. Some of the brands do go a little bit um, gluggy, um, but when you're cooking it in the sauce, it's absolutely fine and it's pretty much safe to use any brands I know you know some of the brands are a little bit different but if you're just using ordinary pasta so this will actually cook quicker as well by the way um, it is preset to I believe 10 minutes but let me just double check that yeah it is so it's preset to 10 minutes this will probably be cooked in about six or seven minutes there's only 350 grams and it's quite um, a fine one it's a European brand. So, yeah, really quick to cook. All right, oops, I beg your pardon, that doesn't go on. We need to put our veggies back on the seam. So pop that one back on and turning, turning it on for 10 minutes and that's going to cook. Um, what else was there about the pasta? Mm -hmm. Yes. Was someone going to ask a question? Um, Anne-Marie, I'm just going to ask you not to mute me. Uh, Stacey's just asked about the baking paper. Um, yes, you can use that for any protein, any protein that you're cooking. So if you're wanting to keep the flavors clean, use the baking paper underneath. If, if you're cooking something like chicken and you want that flavor to go into the soup or the sauce, then you don't need the baking paper. It's more if you just wanna keep the flavors clean. I hope that helps though. All right, what other questions did we have? So for rice cook mode, um, okay. Was there any other questions we missed Anne-Marie earlier that we can answer? Um, did I put cooked pasta into the sauce? So I'm using, you can put cooked pasta into the sauce if you wanted to cook it quickly. Um, I'm actually using a gluten-free pasta, which just cooks nice and quickly. Um, it was three, I think it was about 350 grams there. So yeah, so it does cook in the sauce. So the pasta cooks in the sauce while it's cooking. Um, depending on the type of um, pasta that you use. So I've just, like I was saying, I've got, a, it's quite a thin one. What do you call it? The penne. Um, and it's a gluten-free one. It's really thin, made with rice. I believe it's made with rice. So yeah, it cooks really quickly. Um, yeah, sorry, Emery, was there any more questions or should I just scroll and have a quick look while we're waiting for our next person? How are we going, ladies? Sarah, have you still got a few more minutes on yours? Oh, I am going to play up in about a minute. Okay, and how about you, Sarah Lang? Were you going to? Yeah, I've I've got uh, just one more minute, but I did oh, yeah. have these. What I wanted to show when Nicole was talking. Sure. Um, these are the little. Um, Daryl I don't know how to pronounce them. Daryl molds. Yeah. So the, these things are really good for the Veroma um, that I've used the sticky date puddings. Um, all the sticky toffee puddings and you put them in the Varoma and they steam and you, then you put your caramel sauce over it. So these are a winner. And, um, and also just last night I did yogurt 
um, in my Roma. And this was my yogurt. And you can see in here, and that was just done in the Roma last night. And I make this maybe twice a week and the kids and I just smash that within about two days. Hey, Sarah, my, absolutely my mistake. I think I was a bit late spotlighting you and we didn't get to see the, the Dariel moulds. So oh, do you okay. mind just showing those again? Thank no you. No worries. All right. So these, um, so Nicole is making her beautiful steamed dessert um, and these are really handy things to have. Um, they're just little, little cups that you pop in the Varoma and you steam. And, and I've made, um, I think the recipe in Cookie Do sticky toffee puddings or sticky date um, with sauce. And they're just absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And then just the, the yogurt in the Varoma as well, just as something to talk about. <laughs> well, you could do the cheesecakes. You could do anything. In oh, the yeah. Course. Yeah. So there's um, a nice steamed custard recipe as well that you could um, cook those in. And even if you've just... You've got a cake recipe um, that normally goes in the oven. You could always steam it. It actually does taste, or it turns out a lot more moist, um, you know, and if you didn't want it completely steamed, you could partly steam it and then finish it off in the oven as well. Yep. Did your dish just finish? Uh, yeah, it sure did. So I've got a really cool platter. Um, <laughs> this is all I could find. So... Um, pina colada which you can also make um so the carrots have now been steamed for about 15 minutes um so if you can see them there i'll pop the little tray underneath i'll just use some tongs so it's just it's literally telling me all step by step what to do so it's telling me to transfer carrots into a large bowl so i still haven't really had to think I'm just doing what it says. Carrots are actually perfectly cooked and they're cute little Dutch carrots. So that's all in there. Now it's following these instructions because I sit, like I've said, I've not actually done this before, this one. So it's saying to add the reserved dressing and gently stir to combine. So this was the dressing that we made earlier. It had um, some mint, some cumin, um, paprika, garlic, lemon. So we'll just do what it says, drizzle on over. Hey, while you're, sorry, while you're doing that, we've, Kathy's just asked, what yogurt recipe did you use? Oh, it is the natural yogurt Varoma. Actually, I'll tell you. So I can go back to what I put today. It was, oh no, it's yesterday. Oh gosh, I blew it. Oh, here we go. It's the, it's the natural yogurt Varoma, um, Varoma method. So um, yeah, that's what it is. And it's, yeah, it works beautifully. And it says to put sugar in it um, as optional. And I don't put any sugar in it. And I just, you just need about 50 grams of, yogurt um, so I just you know I've had a natural uh, a Greek yogurt and um, I just scraped the leftovers out and was able to grow that into the next round um, and it just kind of keeps growing growing itself um, okay so back to my recipe but yeah yogurt's great okay cool so I'm just tossing these in that yummy sauce and it smells amazing and it's telling me to set it aside for 20 minutes to cool down but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to keep going because um, I've just about finished and it's telling me to now serve the carrots and garnish with some um, crumbled up feta. So that's easy enough. Just feta, lots of feta. We'll just do exactly what it says. And I now have a beautiful dish that I've never cooked before. It smells amazing. The mint, the lemon, the garlic, the paprika, cumin in that sauce, the cute carrots. That was so easy. So thank you for making me cook that. Thank you, Sarah. It looks beautiful. And can I just say, I have made that before and I didn't have Dutch carrots and I just used normal carrots and I actually cut them into quarters. <laughs> That is so good. They have cooked perfectly. Yeah, awesome. I'm so sorry. 
imagine serving that like just during the week to the kids you know like ta-da look at what the carrots are today they're amazing I'd get a 10 out of 10 I reckon and um, you can you can serve those hot or cold I would have that hot 100%. yeah yeah That's beautiful yeah, yeah. it is it's, it's really good and did you use a Greek feta for that one uh yeah yep yeah beautiful well I have you can eat hers can I eat mine Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh, show us yours, Nicole. Let's cross over to you. Can you see it? <laughs> can you see it okay? Is that better? Yeah. Anne Marie, can you spotlight um, Nick for us? Thank you so much, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, perfect. And this is still quite warm too. I couldn't wait. <laughs> so this is our little our little pistachio cakes here. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> You're not supposed to be eating it. You're supposed to be presenting how it looks. Oh, my God. The texture it looks great, Nick. <laughs> Thank you. I'm hungry. Yeah, the texture is just beautiful. The texture is so smooth and light. It is like a mousse almost, like a little, like, like a lightly steamed mousse. Um, not too much sugar. There's only 30 grams of sugar in the whole recipe. So 30 grams divided by four. It's like seven and a half grams of sugar per serve. It's really, um, really light and just delicious. Well, now you know, like it's... <laughs> so thank right. you for that, yeah. But I tell you what, four are not going to last tonight. <laughs> you, can yeah. eat, you can eat them hot or cold. Yeah. Um, we don't mind eating them warm at all. Um, I know some people, you know, they do like a cold cheesecake, but yeah, it works either way and you can make that one in advance as well. So yes, thank you so much, Nicole, for showing us your finished dish that you've always almost eaten through. <laughs> so good. I'm gonna sit here. <laughs> so good. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you, Nicole. And um how how's Sarah going? She's still going. I'm ready Hi. to plate up. Thank you, so Sarah. I um so I've taken my wontons out, so they're mm -hmm. looking very nice. Um, and I have put some bok choy in here, so I haven't actually even cooked that because I'm just going to pour the broth over it, and it's just going to cook nicely. Um, so I'm just going to pour some broth. Over my wonton. I love this broth, so I could actually have it without the wonton. Um, and then I'm just going to pre throw my mix. I actually hated coriander, but now my I actually use it quite regularly. So I'm just going to put some um, coriander on there. And that is my finished dish. Um, Thank you, Sarah. It looks beautiful. So do you make this? Um, often or is it is this just sort of something that you make occasionally I know you do make wontons I actually probably make this once a month it is definitely something a little bit fiddly because you do need to wrap out your wontons but it is so easy to do mm -hmm. um, and like I was saying when I was actually wrapping them I find it really therapeutic when I'm actually wrapping them up because it's like a de-stress thing for me um, so I tend to make the wonton soup more when I'm super stressed at work. <laughs> um, but uh, Sarah Lamb just reminded me because I made yogurt the other day, the natural one, but I've got the thermomix jars. And so I actually <laughs> just make these and just have them for breakfast in the morning. Um, and it's the same recipe. It's the natural one. Um, but just not in the thermo server. I just make it in the little jars and it's oh, nice. great to have <laughs> in the fridge. Yeah, definitely. Yoga is a great one to, to make. It's, um, yeah, it's quick, mm -hmm. easy, convenient, especially um, with those little jars. And you can get those um, little jars on the mix shop as well. Yeah, and perfect. Yeah, and so also with the wonton um, dish as well, you know, if you wanted to make it a little bit more filling, you could always use noodles um, with that as well. Um, I too don't cook my veggies. I just finally chop them and put them in and pour over the, um, the hot water. And, um, yeah, you could also use some chilli oil 
Are you yeah. a chilling person? I love the chili oil. <laughs> um, and I definitely do like to put a little bit of spice. And I also put some chili flakes on there um, just for a little bit of extra bite. Um, I have also in the past put chili in the wonton. Mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't feeling that brave today to have them for dinner. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely something pretty thermomix days. I probably would have never made something like this. And if it did, it would have riddled me with stress and mess. Um, so I love how easy it is to do stuff like this in the thermomix. Mm -hmm. um, and also there's hardly any cleanup because I'm just going to pour all of the broth into a container and have it for lunch tomorrow and um, put it on a pre-clean and I should be good to go. Absolutely. <laughs> sure. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sarah. No worries. And Evie, should I check in with you and see how you're doing? You've still got a bit of time. Uh, yeah, well, I thought I would save everyone the hassle of hearing the loud machine running for a while. So I actually made the sauce. Um, so for those of you who haven't made this before, I added uh, raw cashews, chicken stock paste. If you don't have chicken stock paste, you can also use the vegetable stock paste, which is amazing. Um, ever since I started using that stock in my food, everything just tastes so much better. Um, and also sea salt and some pepper. So I've already uh, played it up. I just have to now sauce it up. So this is my meal. How good is that? So nice. It's so good. And now I hope I don't destroy this, but no, no, we're good. Now I can actually feed my husband dinner. It's a late one, but sorry. <sighs> I had to wait for this. So that's <laughs> it. How good is that? Awesome. Thank you. I love it. Thank you. It is. It's a beautiful dish. And, um, you know, when I... My kids never liked paprika, but they've actually come to like it now. And, um, yeah, we did make that dish at home too. So, yeah, maybe it'll become one of your favourites. I think it will. <laughs> Thanks, Evie. Um, now over to me. I, uh, I've got my veggies. So normally what I would do, I do have an oval thermo server. So normally I'd get out my oval thermo server, pour my pasta and the sauce in and the veggies. And like I was saying earlier, I'd stir it all through, but I'm actually just going to plate up tonight like so. I probably should have put the veggies on top because um, it looks so much more appealing. And put some more pasta in there as well. And... Actually, I'm going to put some extra feta as well on top. There we go. And that is my dish tonight. So it's really beautiful. There are other recipes on Cookie Do where you can actually make in the bowl, um, you know, your pasta with your sauce and using the Varoma as well, you know, you can do um, some protein up the top while you're food is cooking down the bottom. So take advantage of your Varoma, you know, do a little bit of steaming. Um, you can also reheat food. It does take a little bit longer. And of course the Thermomix does have that heat, um, the warm up mode. But um, once upon a time when I had a TM31, I would just put my leftover dinner bowl, um, you know, um, that I wanted the next day for lunch. I'd literally just pop it in my Varoma, put some water in the bowl and then turn it on and it would just warm up rather than using the microwave. But we're lucky these days because we do have the warm up mode. But if you didn't want to put the food in the bowl, like I said, you can pop your bowl in the Varoma. So the Varoma is so versatile. You can make yogurt, um, you know, steam your fish, um, do you could even do some breads in there as well like um, you know the um, the um, oh my gosh the bagels say it bagels and the Ayo buns thank you and, um, <laughs> and, and pork buns yeah. and Leah I was wondering should we celebrate our consultants who have um, presented for the first time tonight absolutely thank you <laughs> 
you beat me to it. But yeah, I want to, Manto buns, that's right. Is that how you say them? Those Asian, the, that beautiful bread, which Bayo is bun. similar to that. Yes, but you can make those on your buns. Bow so, bun. Bow so, bun. That's the one. Yeah, but um, thank you for um, prompting me, Nicole. So tonight we've actually, um, I'd really like to thank Evie because she is in her 60 days. So she's just halfway through and you have done an amazing job. Thank you so much for helping tonight. And Sarah as well, <laughs> Sarah O'Connor, um, who is just out of her 60 days we're a couple of weeks now and you've done a spectacular job too so thank you so much thank you Sarah Lamb as well and of course Nicole Forrest <laughs> I am going to stop recording now but thank you so much everyone for joining us um, and I'm going to have a look at the chat